We're here. Did we miss anything? We would not presume to begin without you, Ida. Orianger has returned to the Waking Sands, but everyone else is now present. Yes, but for what exactly? We all have duties to attend to, Alphano, so you may dispense with the preamble. Thank you, Elysee. It is the very subject of those duties which compelled me to call this gathering. Though the warriors of darkness no longer pose a threat, Eorzea's many troubles demand no less of our attention. And while I stand by the decision to approach each task as we see fit, I fear our effectiveness will ultimately be diminished should we continue to act in ignorance of each other's efforts. Thus, I propose we elect a successor to Minfilia. Not to serve as a fully-fledged antecedent, perhaps, but as a coordinator of operations. Is that all? Well, then the decision seems clear. No one else has shown any enthusiasm for the role, and judging by your performance at our previous meeting, you would seem the perfect candidate. You always did have a flair for politics. I, I did not mean to... That was not my intention. As my tenure as commander of the Crystal Braves comprehensively demonstrated, I lack the qualities required for such an office. I would much prefer to remain as I am now, a soldier in the field, so to speak. Should none of our numbers step forward, must we then constrain some unwilling candidate to take up the position? Well, based on merit alone, a certain adventurer would be my choice. Though I concede he might struggle to balance his new responsibilities with, let me see, slaying primals, thwarting legatuses, and feeding the orphan poor. Sancred makes a good point. Any who would wear such a mantle would be bound by its obligations. Have we not become sufficiently familiar with each other's methods to act without an overseer? At present, I see no cause to so willingly limit one of our number. Oh, oh my goodness! Your... Help! I need some help here! Tataru, are you all right? Me? I'm fine. It's this poor girl who just staggered in and collapsed on the floor that I'm worried about. Narco! God, how did... Yashola! Please, you have to help her. Kral, a hand if you would. Let us see about closing these wounds. Now, we've staunched the bleeding, but it may be a while before you can move about again. Though, having seen your wounds, I'm surprised you are still moving at all. <sighs> Thank you. My message. It was too important to delay. I took the shortest route I could, though I knew it was more heavily patrolled. As you can see, my efforts at evasion were not entirely successful. Honestly, you're too brave for your own good. What was so urgent that you needed to fight half the Empire to get here? You could have been killed! I'm sorry, Ida. I had good reason. Ah, oh, but I imagine your friends are wondering who this bloody mess of a Mikote is. My name is Minago, and I belong to the Alamegan Resistance. I came to warn Ida and Papalimo about one of our leaders. A man who calls himself the Griffin. He's always been dangerous, but he's planning something new. Something reckless. The Griffin, you say? I've heard the name. Rumor has it your man is eager to test his claws. Aye, and on no easy target. He means to assault Belsar's wall from the Alamegan side. But what does the Griffin possibly hope to gain from such an attack? From what I understand, he wants the fires of war to spread to Eorzea. 
And for that, he needs to control the border with Gridania. So, he means to spark a conflict between the Alliance and the Imperial forces stationed in Alamigo, to have Eorzea's armies aid in the liberation effort, whether they will it or no. His plan is flawed. Even should the Resistance succeed in occupying the Wall, they would not be able to hold it. Imperial reinforcements would drive them out within a week. Be that as it may, if there is even a chance that this scheme could bring about an escalation in hostilities between Eorzea and the Empire, the Alliance must be informed. Agreed. I shall depart for Limsa Laminsa forthwith and seek an audience with the Admiral. Thancred? Uldar is yours. Alphano and Alize, make haste to the Twelveswood and notify the Elder Seedseer of the danger to Gridania. She would duly call a council of the Alliance leaders, whom you must be ready to receive. You will be our voice in Ishgard. Explain the situation to Sir Emmerich and encourage him to send an envoy. Tataru, Kryl, I leave the care of our injured messenger to you. See that she remains quiescent and her wounds closed. I believe that covers everything. Let us be about our tasks. I suspect the ill tidings from Girabania will be held as a turning point. The beginning to a bloody end. The business of war was ever conducted with the coin of self-sacrifice. T'was Master Louis Soir himself who taught us that such costs are not to be ignored or denied. And so I shall embrace them. When the time comes, I will make my choice, as you will yours.
I bid you welcome, my friends. As you will by now be aware, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have come into possession of certain intelligence concerning recent developments in the region of Gear Abanya. It springs, I am assured, from an unimpeachable source. Is that not so, Master Alfino? Indeed, Elder Seedseer. Our information comes directly from a member of the Resistance's inner circle, and we have no cause to doubt its veracity. This griffin of theirs is a fool if he thinks he can hold Belsar's wall against the Empire. When the Imperials move to take it back, they will come in force, and the resulting fighting is all but certain to spill over into the Black Shroud. At the Battle of Cartano, the combined might of three grand companies labored to contend with the remnants of but a single Imperial Legion. Alone, Gridania would be hard-pressed indeed to hold back the tide, should the Garleans turn their minds from reclamation to invasion. May I once more convey my nation's deepest regrets for our inaction in the days prior to the Calamity. Tis a stain upon our ledger that I would fain remove. Elder Seedseer, I do hereby request leave to deploy a defensive force within the borders of Gridania. Ishgard's return to the Alliance shall be honored by more than mere ink upon parchment. The Doman people, too, would join any effort that weakens our common foe. We are few, but our most seasoned shinobi are at your disposal. On behalf of my people, I offer you my humble thanks. Gridania welcomes your assistance. It is time we set our contingency plans in motion. Is the Alliance agreed? Then let us make ready for war. Victory favors the swift. There is much to be done. The Council knows that Alamigo will not soon be wrested from the Empire and its decision to bolster the border's defences seems eminently practical. Why then, brother, do you scowl so? I agree that they have chosen the wisest course available. Indeed, the only reasonable one. Yet something feels awry. In making ready for war, is the Alliance not granting the Griffin the very thing he desired? Any attempt to hold the wall is doomed to failure, aye. But I wonder if we have misjudged the prize for which he plays. <laughs> 